Hey YouTube, it's your beekeeper here. Let's talk generators. I'm coming at you Sunday morning, December 2nd. And I've been watching a lot of videos lately about people prepping, uh, prepping themselves to be self-sufficient from the grid. Now, whatever their philosophies or thinkings are as to why they would need to be self-sufficient, whether it be the impending doom on December 21st, societal collapse as we know it, uh, they've been watching too much TV and waiting for the zombie apocalypse, uh, or something as simple as natural disasters, you really do need to have a degree of self-sufficiency um, because anybody that's been through a natural disaster of any extended period, and I speak from personal experience, uh, if you really expect your federal government, state or local government to be there to hold your hand through it, you are expecting way too much. Just ask those folks on the East Coast that after more than 30 days, they're still in the dark and those guys are getting cold and that's just not cool. But where I come from, and I come from the fifth day of constant rain and wind uh, that I've been getting out here, I guess our area gets subject to a lot, of, a lot of wind and rain in the winter and early spring. And also being in the lovely state that I live in, we're very susceptible to earthquakes. So you have to be prepared, uh, both food, electricity, medical aid, uh, there's a lot of things to prepare for, but this video is going to stay specifically on track of generators. Now, I have friends and neighbors uh, and some idiots that I know that somehow equate their generator size to their manhood and have to go around boasting that they have 10,000 watt generators and they've got these diesel generacs that are wired through their house. And that's all well and good if, if you have a, a substantial amount of fuel on hand, kept on hand, or you have a tanker truck parked in your back alley with a garden hose to it. Uh, but in reality, you don't really need a 10,000 watt generator on any extended basis. And I'm talking about more than, you know, more than a week of power outage, let's say. Let's use as an example, uh, one week, two week, three weeks. If you're running a big 10,000 watt generator, a lot of that is just wasted fuel, absolute wasted consumption. My personal experience has been you sit down and you do a, a load calculation based on what you want to run on your maximum settings. I have compressors and welders that I wanted to be able to power in the event that I needed to use those tools. A uh, freezer and a refrigerator that you want to be able to have run probably at the same time. That's how I calculated mine. I have an 8,000 watt generator, gasoline generator. It's a commercial unit that sits quietly in the shed out of the weather and uh, that'll handle all my needs. And that'll, uh, you know, my personal experience again has been you run it about an hour in the morning to cool down your ice boxes, get everything cold, and then you run it an hour in the evening and you just limit your, your in and out of your refrigerator. And also at that time, while you're running it in the morning or the evening, if you have a well that has a pump on it or some other, you wanna do a load of laundry, that's when you do everything at the same time. You kind of load it all up at the same time. But all the other hours in the day when you just wanna have a couple lights on, or in my case, I have a buck stove fireplace insert that has a fan forced uh, heat exchanger unit, I want to be able to have a minimum consumption figured out. And I did. I sat down and said, all right, I want the fan to run. I want a couple lights to be able to run through the house so we're not carrying candles throughout the entire house. So about 15 years ago, I bought this little 600 watt generator new. It's a Yamaha four stroke 600 watt generator. Quiet, quiet, whisper quiet. And it's small. Look at it. It's the size of a, of a big briefcase or a small suitcase. And it handles all my minimum consumption needs. And as for fuel consumption on this thing, the tank, uh, the tank is two liters. It's a half gallon tank and it'll run eight hours on a tank of gas. So I can have 15 gallons of fuel in storage and I could go for weeks on 15 gallons of fuel and keep my food fresh, my lights on, and my house warm. Uh, just something to consider, just something to consider. And um, right now what I'm doing is I just change the oil and clean the spark plug uh, clean the air filter and what am I doing right now? Oh, actually, uh, right now I goofed up the uh, the throttle cable. So I had it all put back together and realized that the, the throttle slide wasn't working properly because I had knocked the cable out of its little housing. So I'll fix that here in a minute. So that's it. I just wanted to give you something to consider. I'm sure people have talked about this before. I'm not saying that I've reinvented the wheel with this uh, revelation about having two generators, uh, but it was just something to kind of bring to the forefront. 
put a little thought in your head that if you have the, the capabilities to pick up a little guy like this, this will keep your, your phones and your iPads and whatever charged, assuming we still have the infrastructure to run our computer systems. And this has a 12 volt, 10 amp charging system too, that'll also charge batteries. So let's put some fuel in here with my non-approved illegal gas can that my government seems to think I'm not smart enough to be able to use. And let's pull the cord. When I first got this thing, I tipped it, it tipped over in the back of my truck and it filled up the carburetor with oil and it hasn't been easy to start ever since. I heard life. I'll keep choking on for a second. How quiet that is. Any green light. We're gonna keep this girl handy. Like I said, it's really nice to have the big monster generator that's gonna be able to power the world and then some. But in reality, you should, and if you have the ability and money and space, <laughs> it's nice to have the big one to run the fridge and the compressor and welder or whatever. But 90% of the time, you're gonna be running a little guy like this if you. Uh, Want to be able to turn lights on and off with a switch or run your fireplace or something. Minor little stuff, charge your cell phones. Assuming the world hasn't ended and the zombies have taken over the uh, cell phone towers. You know, little guy like this, you don't need to run a 10,000 watt generator just to charge your iPhone. So I'm going to put it on on, no, no choke. Light up, piece of cake. Let it run outside, you can tell it's raining. Let it run outside for a good 20 minutes. Oops, burn off any funk. Nice, no smoke, great little machine. Give it a chance to run to burn off any funk that may be in there. And then also clear the bench for the next thing we gotta look at. Oh, ooh, does that look familiar? 1980 Z50R. That's the bike my kids learned how to ride, my nephews learned how to ride on. And uh, over the summer, we had a kid riding on it and he got a little hot. Got a little hot, I think we got a loss of compression because now it doesn't run so good anymore. So I brought it home from El Rancho here to the city house because I had more time to work on stuff here. Yeah, like I have more time here. And uh, so stay tuned, 1980 Z50R. And pull the head off and uh, see why we lost compression. Thanks for watching.